this is what my current desk setup looks like. Yeah, it's not great, I'll say that. There are a lot of things wrong with it. I mean, the cable management is, well, not managed and the PC sitting on the carpet is probably not a good idea. But I'm showing you this so that you can see the difference between this and this, my new slash first productivity standing desk setup, which looks, feels, and works way better than what I had before. And honestly, I love it. But in the process of getting to this point, I learned a lot of things that you're definitely gonna wanna know if you want to build something similar. So you wanna start with a clean workspace. You wanna give yourself as much room as possible and get rid of anything in your way so that you can build the desk as quickly and as efficiently as possible. This way, everything will go smoothly and you'll actually enjoy the process of building your desk. Speaking of the desk, it's one of the most important pieces of any setup. And in my case, Ergon Office was kind enough to send over their soy desk with a walnut finish and a white frame, which I think goes very well with my other furniture. Now, it probably took me a little over an hour to build this thing, but it was well worth it because this is a fantastic desk. It's built extremely well. The quality is top notch. And this surface, yup, it's solid wood. And this is a sit and stand desk, so I can set it at any height between the range of 22 inches and 48.3 inches. The desk moves up and down smoothly and securely with confidence. There are no weird sounds or cracking noises or anything like that. It has a nice and I guess, soft sound, which isn't too loud. So I'm not worried about moving it late at night or really early in the morning when everyone's asleep. It's also packed with a ton of smart features, a lot of which are set up using this controller to the right. For example, I can have sitting and standing presets for myself and up to three other users. I can also set hourly reminders or even take advantage of the various built-in safety features, such as collision detection, which ensures that the desk comes to an instant stop if something in its way, which is nice because the motors are really strong. They can lift up to 360 pounds pounds of weight, which also means that you can put a lot of stuff on this desk without having to worry about the motors failing, which is nice. Now, if you look under the desk, it's looking clean, but this wouldn't be possible without the cable management solution from Ergon Office, which I'm glad I also decided to get because this is truly what makes it possible to get that essentially cable-less look. And this power bar with nine outlets is the real game changer here because you can just plug everything in it and use the cable net to hide all the wires and everything. It's very well thought out. I like it. One thing I will say though is that it's actually easier to manage longer cables. Seriously, like this HDMI cable from my monitor reached the this dongle just fine, but it kind of had to go through the whole desk diagonally like this, which looked bad, honestly. So I replaced it with a much longer one and now I can properly manage it and it looks better than this at least. I also noticed this with a few other cables too. But either way, I know some of you are thinking that who am I to be telling you about cable management if my old setup looked like this. Well, let me tell you, this is not my first time doing cable management. I just didn't do it on my old setup. So you can trust me. That said, it is really easy to spend a lot of time on cable management. So try not to do that. When it's good enough, move on to something else like the monitor arm. The one I have here is also from Ergon Office and it too follows the same trend of good quality. It's nice and sturdy, doesn't wobble too much and works just as it should. And if you're gonna get one, make sure it's good for your monitor's size and weight. Just like this is for my HP monitor, specifically the HP E243i, which I purchased about two years ago based on what my budget allowed back then. And to be honest with you, it's an okay monitor because it does show 99% sRGB and does go up to 300 nits of brightness, which is not bad. But I do plan on upgrading to something better soon because I feel like the colors are not quite as accurate as I sometimes need them to be, like when making thumbnails. So in those situations, I'm using my MacBook with a way better screen. This is my M1 MacBook Pro and it's great for pretty much everything, like making thumbnails, but not for editing videos. So for that, I still use my PC and it works just fine, but I really don't think this black case goes well with this setup. So I definitely wanna switch to a white one in the future. And yes, it's still on the carpet, but hey, if you look carefully, I do have it on top of a piece of laminate flooring. So the fan on the bottom isn't completely blocked by the carpet. So. Hopefully this helps. Going back to the MacBook though, one of the things I don't really like about it is the camera because it's 720p, so it just looks bad, like really bad, <laughs> especially because this is pretty much like ideal lighting condition. So the one I have actually been using for the past little bit is the Insta360 Link. And this is what it looks like, which is way better in my opinion. Plus it's also got some really cool features like face tracking, which yes, other webcams can do too, but usually they have to digitally crop in so you lose the wide field of view and some image quality. But not with this, since this thing is on a gimbal, so you get the full 4K image at all times, which is 
pretty cool. You can also control a lot of things with gestures. Like I can start and stop the face tracking just by doing this, which I think is something a lot of people will find very useful. Just like the Infinity Max laptop stand from Banks. If you're gonna be using a laptop as a secondary screen, you should really consider getting a stand because it makes a big difference. This is one I would recommend because it's nice and solid. It's built from aluminum, just like the MacBook. It's got nice rubber padding where the MacBook sits so it won't get scratched. And this design doesn't sacrifice cooling regardless of what laptop you have. Plus, it makes a really cool, satisfying clicking sound whenever you rotate it. Now, beside it, I've got an Ergon Office leather desk mat, and this thing is handmade from full grain leather, which is the highest quality of leather available on the market. So everything about it is really premium, and it even smells great. But on top of it, I've got my Logitech MX Master 3, hands down one of the best mice I've ever used. Same with the Keychron Q2 Pro, since this is one of the best 65% keyboards Keychron makes. It has an all metal body, it can wirelessly connect to up to three devices, and switching between Mac and Windows is as simple as moving this switch to right or left. And this is basically what it sounds like right out the box. Not bad, although it could probably be better, right? Well, the thing I love about this keyboard is that it's hot swappable. And so because Keychron also sent over the Gatoron Oil Kings, I decided to install those. And the difference is, well, take a listen for yourself. Better, right? Well, that's exactly why this keyboard is perfect for someone like me, who's just getting into the world of mechanical keyboards. So this is a great choice. Now, one of my biggest takeaways from this entire build is about the desk shelf. And it's that if you're not using one, you're missing out. I say this because before I had one, I saw these as a waste of money and desk space. But oh boy, was I wrong. Because after having used one myself, I realized that it's quite the opposite. This one's also from Ergon Office and it actually creates more space on your desk by adding another level. It also helps you highlight things by placing them on top, just like I did with my wireless charger and the fake plant on the other side. But you can also somewhat hide things by keeping them underneath, just like this Ugreen charger I've got or the these books that I totally read and enjoy. I do also have the first generation Google Home speaker in the very corner of my desk, but you may have noticed that I do not have any real speakers. And that's because I don't really listen to music. And when I'm watching videos, I usually use my MacBooks built in speakers and they're good enough for that. The only time I feel the need to have really good audio is while editing videos. And for that, I have my Beer Dynamics DT770 Pro. These are headphones made specifically for producing really accurate sound. So it's great for editing videos and especially dialogue. One of the things I truly regret not buying though is some kind of USB-C hub. And if you are going to be using a laptop, you should definitely get one too because a dongle like this is just not gonna cut it. I should probably also mention that some of the products in this video were sent to me sometime in the past. Some were sent specifically for this video and others were purchased with my own money. But either way, you'll find links to everything in the description. You know how YouTube works. And so if you enjoyed watching this video, consider subscribing, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you later.